Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. Introduction to Timothy, and Paul wins his first European convert. He came to Derby, that's Paul, and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewess who believed, but his father was a Greek. The brothers who were at Lystra and Iconium gave a good testimony about him. In other words, they liked him and everything they had to say about him was good. Paul wanted to have him go out with him, and he took and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts. Notice here, Paul circumcised Timothy. Now, obviously here, Timothy wasn't a baby, okay? And this really you know, brings up a lot of questions because we just came from Acts chapter 15 where it says that some people said you have to be circumcised in order to be saved. And they said, well, no, let's not start there. Let's start with more or less, you know, the, uh, the Noahide laws, so to speak, okay? And so we go from there to here. Now, most Christians today wouldn't even care about whether or not Timothy was circumcised. But yet, they required that Timothy be circumcised. That is very noteworthy. So Paul wanted to have him go out with him, and he took and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. Verse 4, as they went on their way through the cities, they delivered the decrees to them to keep which had been ordained by the apostles and elders who were at Jerusalem. This, of course, is speaking about the laws that the apostles said the Gentiles must observe in context in order to be saved. If you haven't listened to the teachings from Acts chapter 15, pause this video and go back and listen to them. It is essential for you to know the context in which this is spoken. So the assemblies were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. When they had gone through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit didn't allow them. This is very significant because, you see, a lot of evangelists today would never, you know, obey a so-called voice to say, don't go and preach the gospel to these people. Oh, don't go and preach the gospel to these people. But we see here that the Spirit of God told them not to go to Asia, not to go to Bithynia. Don't preach the gospel there. That is significant. Think about that for a minute. Now, we know later on they did go to Asia, so obviously this is talking about for the time being, temporarily speaking, don't go to Asia right now. Verse 8, passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. There was a man of Macedonia standing, begging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go out to Macedonia concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the good news to them. This here is proof that Luke was with them. It wasn't just Paul and Silas, but Luke was with them. It is very significant to understand that in the early centuries of the so-called New Testament church, there was a man by the name of Marcion or Marcion. He was one of the first so-called heretics, okay? Polycarp, the disciple of John, said that Marcion is a devil, okay? Marcion was denounced as a very evil heretic. The doctrine of Marcion was this. He went extreme on the teaching of Paul that it's got nothing to do with good deeds or nothing to do with good works, but it's got everything to do with faith. So what he did was he completely rejected almost every book of the New Testament except for the books of Paul and Luke, okay? And this is significant because even Marcion himself saw how Luke and Paul were very connected in their doctrines, okay? The gospel so-called of Luke was very compatible with the so-called gospel of Paul, whereas Matthew, Mark, and John was not. And that's because Marcion saw a lot of things in the gospels of Matthew, Mark, and John that really 
furthered the doctrine of works, and rightly so. Although I'm not going to go into much detail about Martian and all of his heresies, my point is simply this. The Gospel of Luke and the Gospels of Paul are very much alike. Verse 11, setting sail therefore from Troas, we made a straight course to Samothrace, and the day following to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a city of Macedonia, the foremost of the district, a Roman colony. We were staying some days in this city. On the Shabbat, on the Sabbath day, we went outside of the city by a riverside where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. This here is also a very significant detail because you see Paul, Silas, Luke, and everybody else that was with them, they celebrated Shabbat, okay? They're like, okay, it's Shabbat now, okay? This is the Sabbath. Let's go find a place of prayer. It is believed that a place of prayer is a synagogue. The term place of prayer and synagogue being synonymous. So they're like, okay, it's, it's Shabbat now. Let's go to the synagogue. Let's find a place of prayer. Verse 14, a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, one who worshiped God, heard us. The Lord opened her heart to listen to the things which were spoken by Paul. Again, look at this phrase, the Lord opened her heart. And really, it takes the work of the Lord for someone to actually receive the message of the Lord. Verse 15, when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. So she persuaded us. Again, us here, obviously, including Luke. Now, in the next teaching, we're going to be talking about how a fortune teller had an evil spirit. Very important to understand this, and this is going to be an awesome teaching, so don't miss it. Until then, seek God with all your heart, and you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.